In this lesson, we will examine the methods of communicating vital information around an aerodrome when communication by radio telephony is not possible, either because the aerodrome communication system is unserviceable or the aircraft communication system is unserviceable. The communication system that is used is visual signals in the form of coloured lighting. It is therefore essential that all aeroplanes keep a good lookout for visual signals coming from air traffic control towers when operating in the vicinity of aerodromes. The lamps used by air traffic control for visual signals are narrow beam and directional, so if you see a signal, then you can be sure that the signal is being directed at you. In the following sections, we will examine each of the visual signals in turn. A steady red light from air traffic control to an aircraft in flight means that the pilot is not to land the aircraft, must give way and keep circling. A steady red light from air traffic control to an aircraft or vehicle on the ground means that the aircraft or vehicle must stop. A red flare from air traffic control to an aircraft in flight means that the pilot must not land, whereas A red flare from an aircraft means that the aircraft requires immediate assistance. A flashing red light from air traffic control to an aircraft in flight means that the pilot is not to land the aircraft as the aerodrome is closed. A flashing red light from air traffic control to an aircraft or vehicle on the ground means that they must clear the landing area. A flashing green light from air traffic control to an aircraft in flight means that the pilot is to return to the aerodrome and await landing clearance. A flashing green light from air traffic control to an aircraft or vehicle on the ground means that the aircraft or vehicle is clear to taxi or move to the manoeuvre area. A steady green light from air traffic control to an aircraft in flight means that the pilot is cleared to land. A steady green light from air traffic control to an aircraft or vehicle on the ground means that the aircraft is cleared to take off or the vehicle is cleared to proceed. A steady or flashing green light or green flare from an aircraft means that the aircraft is asking to land if at night or, if by day, asking to land in a different direction from that indicated. A flashing white light from air traffic control to an aircraft in flight means that the pilot is to land here on receipt of a steady green light and then await further instructions. A flashing white light from air traffic control to an aircraft or vehicle on the ground means that the aircraft or vehicle is to return to the starting point on the aerodrome. Finally, a white flare or a regular use of navigation and or landing lights from an aircraft means that the pilot is compelled to land. Aircraft must acknowledge receipt of any visual signal and may make the following responses to do so. When in flight, during the hours of daylight, by rocking the aircraft wings, during the hours of darkness, by flashing on and off twice the aircraft's landing lights, or, if not so equipped, by switching on and off the navigation lights twice. When on the ground, during the hours of daylight by moving the aircraft's rudder or ailerons, during the hours of darkness by flashing on and off twice the aircraft's landing lights, or, if not so equipped, by flashing on and off twice the navigation lights. As well as light signals, other ground-to-air signals are used to convey information to the pilot. A signal square is usually positioned outside the air traffic control tower or at another location on the movement area where it can be seen from the air anywhere in the vicinity of the aerodrome. In this area, ground-to-air signals are laid out to convey essential information to pilots unable to communicate by radio. Other signals applicable to non-radio traffic on the ground are displayed on a signals mast, 
or by means of indicator boards. The first signal in the signal square is a white landing T. This signal signifies that aeroplanes and gliders taking off or landing shall do so in a direction parallel with the shaft of the T and towards the cross arm, unless otherwise authorised by the appropriate ATC unit. The yellow arrow shown is just to help you visualise the direction of landing and it is not part of the signal. A white disc displayed alongside the cross arm of the T in line with the shaft of the T signifies that the direction of landing and takeoff do not necessarily coincide. A red and yellow striped arrow placed along the whole of two adjacent sides of the signals area and pointing in a clockwise direction signifies that a right-hand circuit is in force. A white dumbbell signifies that movements of aeroplanes and gliders on the ground shall be confined to paved, metalled or similar hard surfaces. A black strip across each disc of the white dumbbell at right angles to its shaft signifies that aeroplanes and gliders taking off or landing shall do so on a runway, but that movement on the ground is not confined to paved, metalled or similar hard surfaces. A red letter L displayed on the dumbbell signifies that light aircraft are permitted to take off and land either on a runway or on the area on the aerodrome designated by a large white letter L. A white double cross signifies that glider flying is in progress. A red panel square with a yellow diagonal stripe signifies that the state of the manoeuvring area is poor and pilots must exercise special care when landing. A red panel square with yellow stripes along each diagonal signifies that landing is prohibited and most likely will continue to be so for some time. A white letter H signifies that helicopters shall take off and land within the area designated by a large white letter H. The example signal square shown here incorporates some of these signals. At intervals along the boundary of an aerodrome, orange and white stripe markers are used to delineate the boundary where it is insufficiently conspicuous. Runway taxi holding positions are established on each taxiway leading to a runway in order to protect aircraft on takeoff and landing by ensuring that other taxiing aircraft and vehicles are held well clear of the runway and, where appropriate, outside the ILS sensitive area. There are two styles of runway taxi holding position marking, patterns A and B. A pattern A style runway taxi holding position marking consists of two solid and two broken lines laid across the entire width of the taxiway and normally at right angles to the taxiway centre line, the broken lines being closer to the runway. A pattern B style runway taxi holding position marking consists of a ladder mark laid across the entire width of the taxiway and normally at right angles to the taxiway centre line. On a runway, two or more white crosses indicate that the section of the runway is unfit for aircraft movement and is not to be used by aircraft in any circumstances. A yellow cross indicates that that portion of the taxiway up to the next standard marking is unfit for use by aircraft. On a selected part of the aerodrome, a yellow marker in the shape of a St George's cross indicates an area reserved for the dropping of tow ropes or similar articles. On an aerodrome administrative building, control tower or flight plan office, a black letter C on a yellow background means pilots of visiting aircraft should report here. Normally located on the control tower building, a black two-figure designator against a yellow background indicates the runway in use or direction of takeoff and landing. This completes the section on signals on the airfield runways and building. Next, we will examine the signals found on the signal mast. Although the following signals are no longer described in the annexes, for completeness, and the possibility you may come across them, they are mentioned here. A black ball suspended from a mast signifies that the directions of takeoff and landing are not necessarily the same. 
two red balls disposed one above the other and suspended from a mast signify that glider flying is in progress at the aerodrome. A rectangular green flag flown from a mast indicates that a right-hand circuit is in force. The last of the aerodrome visual signals to examine is the wind sock. The wind sock indicates the wind direction and speed. It is usually coloured international orange to ensure it is visible, is located adjacent to the landing areas and is visible from each runway threshold and in all directions of approach. It is usually lit so that it is visible at night. Determining the direction of the wind from the windsock is relatively straightforward. The windsock aligns itself with the prevailing wind. However, to determine the wind speed, one must compare the angle of the windsock to the true horizontal. For example, if a standard 15 knot windsock is fully erect or horizontal, then the wind speed is at least 15 knots. If this windsock is at a 45 degree angle from the horizontal, then the wind speed is approximately 7 to 8 knots. This completes the lesson on the aerodrome visual signals.